Harry Kane, with a career tally of over 350 goals, surprisingly lacks a single trophy to his name, if you compare him to players like Drogba, who never matched Kane's scoring rate. However, this week brought hopes that Kane's trophy drought might end with his transfer to Bayern Munich. Imagine this, on the day of joining Bayern, Kane stepped onto the field as a sub in the 64th minute, greeted by cheers from the crowd while his team was trailing 2-0 in the DFL Super Cup final against RB Leipzig. Yet the Kane curse persisted with his team ultimately losing 3-0. But why is Kane seemingly cursed? Will he ever win a title? Here's the twist. You know, many people consider it just a single bad day, unrelated to Kane. Seriously, give us a break. Remember when Spurs faced Liverpool in the UCL final? In those monumental matches, it's when the best players shine, stepping up to lead their teams to victory. Unfortunately, Tottenham's players were notably absent in this aspect. Among all their big names, only Hyung Ming Song can truly say he made a difference during the game. On the grandest night in Tottenham's history, the team needed its top players to perform, but they fell short. Certainly, you could say that Spurs was the second best team between Liverpool and them, so it might explain the loss. However, that wasn't the story with Italy versus England in the final. On paper, many people saw England as the likely winner of the Euros, yet in football, things are always unpredictable. After a 120 minute battle, it all came down to penalties. England lost even after having a lead in the penalty shootout after two rounds. Just when everybody believed it was finally coming home, well, it just didn't. Do you know why? Because of the Kane curse. Okay, maybe you're thinking of brushing this aside, saying we don't believe in superstitions or curses, but here's another thing to ponder. Let's take a look at the World Cup quarter-final loss against France. But before we move ahead, we have a surprise for you. In the Euros final, Kane managed to score his penalty against Donnarumma. However, in the quarterfinals, he probably missed one of the most significant penalties of his whole career. Kane's first penalty tied him with Wayne Rooney's record for England goals at 53 and also meant he had scored more penalties in normal time at World Cups than any other player ever. Yet, with just six minutes left on the clock and enormous pressure, he launched his second penalty high over the bar. Kane's devastation was palpable, and as the final whistle blew, his despair was evident. So once more, England put up a solid performance on the day, and they could have advanced to the semi-finals and even potentially the final instead of France. And just like before, when everyone was convinced that it was coming home, the Kane curse stepped in, once again blocking the path. All this dials down to one thing. Is Kane the curse? Given these instances, there's been talk about whether there's a pattern to Kane's performance dipping when the pressure is at its highest. A recent debate has also sparked discussions among football fans across the country. Would you prefer to have had Jamie Vardy's career or Harry Kane's? Initially, the immediate choice might seem to be Harry Kane, especially considering he's the captain of England and recently became the country's top goalscorer. However, as you delve into the conversation, considering their career trajectories and the trophies they've secured, you begin to realize that the debate is much closer than it appears at first glance. We'll have to see if Kane can turn the tables on his supposed curse and settle this debate once and for all during his time at Bayern. But if he fails to do it, we have to believe that the curse is real. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you never miss out on new content. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.